Welcome to a presentation on Y-DNA charting. So what is Y-DNA charting? It's basically creating a box to Senate chart for Y-DNA testing information. It's very similar to a box to Senate chart generated by most so software programs for geological purposes. It basically shows how the testers are related to each other, just like a genealogy box to Senate chart. It's an excellent tool for admins to demonstrate visually how people are related and recommend additional te testing options. It's primarily used for haplogroup charting, but can be also used for very large uh, surname clusters as well. This is a very genealogically friendly presentation. Uh, most genealogists expect to see charts to visually show how they're related versus the family tree and SDR reports, which are just groupings. Uh, YDA testers are already familiar with this kind of charts, and so it makes the transition from genealogy to genetic geology much easier. If enough testers have the same surname, they can visually see how they're related to each other. But even if they're not part of a larger surname cluster, they can still see at least how they're related to their closest matches. Here's what's required for good charting. First of all, it's best used for larger haplogroup projects versus smaller surname clusters. The ideal time frame for haplogroups are for those that are from 1,200 to 2,500 years ago before present time. Now, these are also best for signatures where there are just one signature associated with the group, and it can be used to predict the haplogroups. Also, it, 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 it helps to not have very much convergence, and it requires 67 markers uh, minimum to, to, in order to achieve accuracy. It's best to have at least 100 to 200 testers and 20 to 40 branches, but this can be done at smaller groups. It's just that the accuracy will suffer some more. Also, because of the time frame, a CDY markers should not be used because of its high mutation rates. There is significant progress being made. Uh, for very large surname clusters are now becoming much more common, and they're becoming much larger. The number of SNP branches continues to grow at a phenomenal rate and the testing of these white step branches by many different step tests. The sample sizes for haplogroups are now into the hundreds, and some are even up to 1,000 at 67 markers. As the sample size grows and the number of step branches goes, so does the ability to chart higher percentage of the testers and obtain higher accuracy in the charting. But progress will vary within haplogroups and among haplogroups. For those belonging to very prolific lines that are well tested, significant progress is being made. But for the less prolific lines and the less tested lines, you got to set expectations because there'll be much less uh, progress. Progress is not even distributed, but sample size has increased the progress will be made in higher percentages. Just as you do not have much genetic distance in some areas, that also slows down the progress as well. You have to set expectations of the charting tools. Uh, for projects that are dominated by United Kingdom and Ireland, there's massive attest, testing being done by American and other colonies. Uh, also, the sample sizes in southeastern Europe would just not be as much. Therefore, the sample size are going to be smaller and it's going to be more difficult to do charting. Even within UK and Ireland, there remain smaller haplogroups that have very few living male descendants to test. And even within the prolific haplogroups, part of every haplogroup will have much slower progress because it is less prolific or it has, been not, has not been tested as much today. Here is an actual chart from L226 to give you a feeling for what charting will look like. First of all, I'll discuss the purple boxes. The purple boxes are generally SNP boxes, but sometimes they link to uh, additional pages for the same SNP marker as well. In this particular uh, graphic, there are four 
whole SNP branches included just on one page, and also links to two additional SNP pages as well. The next one is the kind of the bluish uh, green boxes. These are the SNP boxes that have Y-SNP testing. Uh, next are the white boxes. These are the branches based on SDR mutations. Uh, and then last, there are boxes that vary from kind of a reddish color to a more dark greenish color. These are SNPs that have been predicted. And I'll go more into those at a later date, but the, the more red you are, the less uh, reliable the, or the lower accuracy to be, it'd be down the 60% range. If you're a much deeper green, your accuracy would go up to 80 to 90%. Here are some basics for charting. First, the charting has to enforce the SNP testing. But if no terminal SNPs are found, in other words, you're not at the very lowest part of your tree, partially Y-SNP tested people can be still predicted to lower levels in the tree. Only SDR signatures of Y-SNP tested individuals can predict others that are not Y-SNP tested. You don't want prediction to, to predict other people because that's just bad statistics and bad math. If, the, if it is not a thermal test, not a terminal SNP, then negative SNP results are key to, to eliminating many false assignments. There has been one major discovery in charting, that's, that, that's the events of dependent mutations. Due to probability theory, a dependent event can only occur if a previous event has occurred first. Dependent events are incredibly rare, since they only happen at the rate of the, of the mutation rate of the marker taken to the power of two. With 500 testers, only a couple dozen of dependent events are possible, yet there would be thousands of independent mutational events. Uh, dependent mutational events is really a hard concept to understand by most. Fortunately, there are only two types of dependent events. One is a backwards mutation. This is when you have your normal first mutation along any given path from the very earliest part of the tree down to the tester. But then it's followed by a second, uh, by a second event, which is dependent. And this is backwards towards the original value. So that a backwards mutation is, is one. And then the second one is a multiple mutation. This is when you have your first independent mutation, followed by a second dependent mutation of the same marker value that further increases away from the original value. So both of these are about equal amounts, but they are very rare and should be avoided when charting. There is a tool called SAPP, which is a nice tool. And it has its strengths and it has its weaknesses. It does an extremely good job of revealing genetic clusters or related testers that manual analysis can miss. So if nothing else, you can use this tool to collect the, the clusters together if you're attempting to do it manually. It also does an excellent job of Y-SNP testing enforcement. And it does a good job on the number of dependent events. There are lots of optional features can, that allow you to kind of fine tune. And it's the only tool that's publicly available that automates charting. But there are issues with this tool. It is based on network joining methodology versus the uh, signature recognition, which is how SNP prediction works. And this is binary logic regression. It's not really implemented. Uh, it forces charting of all input, even when the accuracy goes down to 20, 10 to 20%. So, and there's no options to allow various levels of accuracy. Also, the mixed resolution does not work well. And it takes two hours to run 500 testers, and above 500 testers, the program uh, crashes. Here's another page that's, uh, page that's based on um, signature matching. In this case, I will go through and give you an idea of the accuracy of charting and what it takes to get accurate charting. I'll first start with the upper left, which is kind of a, the red, most reddish color. It's red because that's a warning sign, because there's only two 67 marker 
uh, markers involved in matching this. So this is accurate only at a 60% approximate accuracy. So it's, it's kind of a reddish color as a warning sign that this may change over time. Uh, the next is kind of the uh, yellowish brown. This is uh, substantially better because it has three 67 marker testers, a uh, three 67 marker uh, signature. And the, the accuracy of, of going just from two to three goes up tremendously. And this goes up to about a 75% accuracy. And then down below, uh, you can, uh, on the right side, you have uh, four, no, five uh, markers. And that makes it pretty green. Pretty, uh, when it's pretty green, that means you're in the uh, 80 to 90% accuracy range and can feel comfortable that the prediction is pretty accurate at this level. L226 is kind of a poster child for charting. I spent a tremendous amount of time, but it's a manually done process. It's not for the weak of heart because it takes a lot of time. It's ideal because it's on the younger end of the ideal range, being at 15 younger years before present, and has extremely minor convergence. It also has 30, 83 known branches, and these branches are YSNP tested extensively. It has a very large sample size of 690 testers now with 67 or more markers with a significant amount of 111 markers uh, involved. It has 125 NGS tests, primarily big Y. It has 100 L226 SNP packs and 200 Y SNPs have been tested at Y sequence. Also, this project has had targeted testing to increase coverage and to really uh, test the boundary conditions of L226 that are not necessarily the best choices that help understand the signatures and get more charted. We are now not achieving 90% coverage in the 60 to 95% accuracy level, which was just not thought possible a short uh, year ago. If you're interested in more information, first of all, here is a link to the actual chart. It's it's around 80 some odd pages long, but is you can search, uh, use the search replace, the, the search mechanism of PDFs, and you can search for your uh, ID numbers, surnames, for particular uh, uh, SNP branches that they tested positive for, and so, and it's also hyperlinked uh, between various pages. The second is a YouTube, YouTube video. It's the first is how YSNPs are used in analysis. And so it gives you a more a broader understanding of the importance of SNPs and how they're used by admins and surname project uh, test uh, admins. The next is a YouTube that shows you how SNP prediction works. Uh, and it's a um, more of an in-depth technical description if you want to know the details of how SNP prediction works. And it's a based on binary logic regression. The next YouTube is a uh, kind of introductory to how statistics should can be applied to genetic genealogy. Uh, the next YouTube is a nice overall introduction to Y-DNA by Maurice Gleason, who is a, a international leader and, and he coordinates the Genetic Genealogy Ireland conference every year. Then there are two more two, uh, YouTube videos of L226 uh, admins at one of the uh, more recent uh, uh, events at Gen Genetic Genealogy Ireland. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you have any comments, feel free to send me an email.